Tricky one, isn't it? Well, it is for me. It seems pretty simple. And welcome to Unity of Flagstaff, by the way. <laughs> However, Alice said something. Oops. I promise I won't go back over there. Yeah. Alice said something that um, it can seem a little passive. Hope can seem a little passive. Sometimes it's the, I just hope this happens. Am I on? I just hope this happens. I hope this microphone works. I hope that all the effort that Matt, the extra extraordinary effort that Matt made this morning to make everything happen works. Oh, so you're just going to be loud. Okay. All right. No problem. You've got me off, though, so I'm not going to create a squeal. All right. So here we go. Now I'm tethered. Boy, I hope this works. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I like to start out with a little something funny because I think that's fun. <coughs> I'm also running the PowerPoint, so let's do this. All right, there we go. Okay. We're a little shorthanded this morning. We've got an incredible volunteer team, and it was a snowy day. It was a holiday weekend. People had other things to do. So what that tells me is, is I'm going to continue to invite people into stepping up. <laughs> there are things to get done. And even when we live in our amazing, beautiful new location, yay, yay, <laughs> that we are incredibly raising the funds to make happen, and we can eliminate the fear of what are we doing here, there will still be work to do. So I appreciate that. That's why if you keep inviting friends, it gets easier all the time. <laughs> so I'd like to start out with a little something funny funny. And so the best I could come up with was a, was a quote by Bob Hope, since I'm talking about hope. <laughs> <laughs> I do benefits for all religions, he said because I would hate to blow the hereafter on a technicality. <laughs> and we're all about that openness and oneness and inviting everyone in here at Unity of Flagstaff, and that includes these folks that are watching, and we have folks that are watching. It keeps going up every week. That's a pretty exciting thing. That's what I was hoping for when I started the YouTube thing. And so this week I did a little work, I did a lot of work, I've done a lot of work around hope because I do struggle a little bit with it because it does feel a little passive and it feels like it's out there and it feels like it's something that's beyond me a little bit. I really hope that happens. I really hope this comes true. Now, you guys may be so much more spiritually mature than me that you're not doing that, but I'm still doing that sometimes. And yes, I do have a little acronym, Hold Only Positive Energy. But I will tell you in the evolution of this talk and in the preparation of working through this for a couple of weeks, I have a different one. That's a teaser because I'm not going to share it till the end. Oh. Hope is represented by the color purple in our new thought metaphysics practice. And we are starting Advent. This is the first week. And it just so happens that the first week of Advent is hope. I love it when a plan comes together. And that was purely accidental. <laughs> hope is what we hang on to with our fingernails at times. And hope sometimes feels like a last ditch effort. There's a very physical impact of hope that science is showing. In fact, the study, the first study of placebos, which actually was founded, introduced by a nurse but the doctor took credit for it. Placebos were based on, she acted as if she had a syringe full of the morphine that the patient needed to go through the surgery. And she gave him saline instead because that's what they had. And the doctor said, this is never going to work. And she said, shh, 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 shh. And placebos were born. And he built a career on studying them. And it came down to hope. She gave the patient hope. I work in hospice, and one of the misnomers about hospice is we're just there to get people across the finish line. No, we're not. And we're not just about giving people dignity. It's about hope. There is still time to heal the wounds that they may have accumulated through life that they haven't addressed yet. That there is time 
to find the forgiveness that will bring them peace. And we give them that hope. It's essential to the well-being of our brains, science says. In fact, what they're finding is, is that when we feel hopeful, we release endorphins. And there's another really fancy word that I'm probably going to mess up, but I don't think anybody in this room will know what it is, so it's all right. Enkephalins, how about that? The brain releases that in the process when it feels hopeful. Michelle Obama hit it right on the head, in my opinion, when she said, history has shown us that courage can be contagious and hope can take on a life of its own. In fact, it can create life itself. This is a pretty big deal. And when you look up hope, there are about 14,000 different definitions, which usually indicates to me that nobody's really nailed it yet. So I thought, well, I could add another. <laughs> what I know is that Webster's says this. It's a desire accompanied with expectation of obtaining what is desired. It is a belief that is obtainable. Well, that gives it a little more hopeful feeling, in my opinion, rather than, excuse me, I'm not so good with this one hand thing. <laughs> I've been spoiled. Rather than it feeling like it's out there, hope is, of course, about it is obtainable. There is a, a verse in the Bible in Colossians, and it says, the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So Charles kind of breaks that down for us and says, hope of glory is the Christ spirit within us. Hope being the spirit. Glory being, and this is actually a definition, prosperity or splendor. So his theory on Christ in you is the hope of glory was, in practical language, that our expectation of the fulfillment of all good is our divine right. I thought Charles did a pretty good job with that. That feels pretty hopeful. But I just couldn't get there. I still struggle with what is it and how does it work and what is the positive or the most productive use of hope? My little intellect was spinning in a lot of directions. I know that is hard to imagine also. <laughs> so you get into hope, and then you talk about needing to have faith, and then you start talking about trust, and then I go, like, I just need to get back to hope. So I did some more digging, and this is what I found. The Indo-European definition of hope actually comes from, and I thought this was fascinating, that's why I'm telling you, it comes from the root word koi. Koi not as in the fish, but the word koi means curve, turning a corner. Yeah, I thought it was cool. So hope in its original, in its actual definition, means a change in direction, going a different way. I thought if that doesn't fit into new thought, I don't know what does. That couldn't have been around when Charles was around or he'd have landed on that like crazy. Hope is changing direction taking a turn and going a different way. That aligns with a new thought, doesn't it? That put a whole new idea around it for me. A change in direction, getting a new thought, having a new direction around the thought that you're holding. This made hope more amenable to me. It felt more workable to me. It felt like I could actually claim being hopeful if it means taking a new direction. Where in your life have you acknowledged a consciousness of hope 
that was actually defining the fact that you turned a corner, that you were going a new direction. This has happened all around us for a long time. There was a Christmas story, and it was about hope. Because the old law of the Old Testament was taking a turn. We were turning the corner and getting a new thought and going a different direction about claiming that we are divine children of God rather than being born into the original sin. We were taking a turn in realizing that we could take control of our lives. And we had an example of that in that baby on Christmas Day. That's hope. When you turn the corner, when you get a new thought about it, now you've moved into a place of hopefulness and you're truly not just wandering around. Hoping this comes true, I'll hold a positive thought. I'll hold only positive energy, Penny says. <laughs> no. It's about going deeper with that thought. It's about truly consciously saying, I am moving toward hope by taking a new turn. Today is World Day, AIDS Day. How many corners got turned that we are now arriving at a place that we have a national celebration of all the research and the work and the advance that we've made around AIDS? How about civil rights? And sometimes we feel like we're making a U-turn. <laughs> but we're making a turn, folks. We made a turn, and that is what gave those people hope. That is what inspired them into seeing their own greatness and inviting the people around them into that. Where in your life does hope serve you in that way? I loved finding this out, that hope was about turning a corner and going a new direction. And so it came for me that hope is a twist of faith. That's what it is. It's when we make that new turn and we take on that new thought that we can then move into a place of trust, that we can move into a place of faith. I have an acronym for the word faith, and so far I'm still sticking with it. Fully allowing it to happen. And when you have made that new step, when you've taken that new direction, you can step in with a level of confidence that says, I am fully allowing this to happen. I am hope-filled. And when the opportunity comes that I have to make another turn, <laughs> and we have to all the time, when it doesn't turn out the way we thought it was going to, like Alice referenced, and we have to adjust, because we stand in a place of hope and we are willing to make that corner, and we do this from a place of fully allowing it to happen. We do it from a place of faith. Hope becomes a tool that I can plug into every day. Because I, as a divine child of God, and with the tools that we pick up in these rooms and in our lives, I know how to make a new direction. I know how to take that turn. Where are you practicing that, and where will it feed you and serve you in your life? One tiny little turn. One of hope. Where is that happening? And in this season... And we're in a season. I shoveled it off my driveway this season. <laughs> in this season, and it gets busy, and sometimes there's lots of family, and sometimes there's none. What thought can you change that much and realize that you're standing in a place of hope? And how will that impact how you move forward? Friends, you are hope-filled. 
We're doing it every day in our life. This week, I was subject to information about a young lady. And she took her life, and she's young, and she has children. And it just seemed so awful, and it still does. I can feel it in the room right now. And I asked myself, <coughs> how could she be without hope of any kind? And so as human beings, as we step into this role, as spiritual beings, it is ours to give that to each other. Invite people, be the beacon, be the big yellow arrow that says, turn left right here. It says road closed. Let me love you into that change. Let me support you into making a different turn. We have this power. We are this power. We are hope. We are the next turn. And we are committing to live our lives in such a way that we are ready to take that direction on our own and to offer it to those around us. Hope is an easy one, I figured out. At least, it became easier for me this week. So, look at this. See if I can do this. <laughs> Rather than wander around, open your eyes. Be hopeful. Look at the wonder. And I give this new acronym to you for hope. Having our perceptions evolve. Namaste. <laughs>